Hurricane Milton continues to remain a powerful and intense hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico and is going to make landfall in Florida late tomorrow night as a major hurricane. And this hurricane continues to defy odds as the second strongest hurricane on record in the Gulf of Mexico. But something weird has been happening over the last 24 hours that has actually weakened this hurricane temporarily. And that's what we call an eye wall replacement cycle. This is very common for healthy hurricanes. And we've been seeing that over the last 24 hours. Essentially what that means means is that we initially had a small and compact eye that eventually formed into a larger eye overnight into this morning and we are starting to see that again on the infrared imagery this afternoon there is a more definitive eye what that basically means is that this is actually going to intensify throughout the day today will likely remain a category high end category four or low end category five hurricane as it moves to the east and then eventually as we go into tomorrow we are still going to have wind shear in effect across much of the eastern gulf of mexico that will eventually lead to some weakening once the approaches florida but it will not be enough to prevent the catastrophic impacts that are expected along the coast tomorrow afternoon and evening Here's a closer view on the infrared imagery of that eye reforming. We officially have an eye again, pretty defined eye wall. So over the next 12 hours, we'll probably see a little bit more intensification until it eventually starts to weaken just a little bit tomorrow as it approaches Florida. Hurricane Milton is already very historic. It is the second strongest hurricane on record when it comes to pressure to ever be in the Gulf of Mexico. And it almost beat Rita back in 2005, but 897 millibars of pressure is the reading that we had yesterday yesterday evening with this hurricane it's unbelievable and honestly astronomical that we've seen something like this this year uh, again really intense hurricane yesterday it will not be this low in pressure when it makes landfall in florida but it's still going to be a major hurricane now let's talk more about the intensity and where this hurricane will be making landfall and there have been some minor changes to the forecast over the last 24 hours those minor changes though are actually major changes in a way because a 10 mile difference between where this makes landfall could be the difference between tampa bay seeing catastrophic impacts that we've never seen before or potentially slightly less impacts but still major impacts for Tampa Bay so let's begin with what it looks like right now again this is still an intense hurricane very compact eye and the winds that are hurricane force are also very compact once we go later into today and eventually into tomorrow this area of wind the wind field is essentially going to grow in size as this approaches Florida which means a larger chunk of Florida will be dealing with hurricane force wind gusts and wind speeds and that'll lead to more power outages that could be numerous to widespread at times. You'll notice, though, it will start to weaken as it approaches Florida, which is the good news, but it will still be at least a Category 3 hurricane upon landfall tomorrow evening once this approaches Tampa Bay. Here's the big thing that we need to pay attention to very closely, and this is really going to be a big deal, I think. The difference between this hurricane model, between other models as well, is that this hurricane model has us making landfall right just to the north of Tampa. That would essentially be worst-case scenario. That is because all that storm surge will be flowing in from the winds that are coming from the west and southwest pushing all that water into the bay the best case scenario for tampa would be this making landfall just south of tampa that's where a lot of other models have shifted over the last 12 hours or so and if that happens tampa bay would still see storm surge that's significant but it wouldn't nearly be as impactful with that being said if it's further south we would see greater impacts for those back over in charlotte harbor and the storm surge would be higher there so it's really there's no best case scenario for anybody in this case really but it would be better if this did not go right just to the north of Tampa because that would impact a very highly populated area in Tampa Bay. Nonetheless, we are still talking about hurricane force winds, substantial storm surge that is going to be potentially historic and as well as prolific rainfall as this makes landfall. And eventually this will go right down I-4 as we go into Thursday morning and it will continue to produce hurricane force winds for much of the state of Florida until this eventually goes offshore. We'll eventually have winds coming out of the northeast and that will allow for some storm surge to also impact areas along the east coast of Florida during the daytime hours on Thursday. Now let's go in depth in terms of the impacts that are expected in the state of Florida and we have very good confidence that this will be making landfall within the proximity of Tampa Bay. So with that said we are expecting substantial rainfall to begin Wednesday night and go all the way throughout the morning hours on Thursday for much of central Florida. That's going to be anywhere along that I-4 corridor from Tampa Bay back through Daytona Beach and that is all going to penetrate the potential for 
10 to 15 plus inches of rainfall within a very short amount of time, which will lead to significant flooding, I think, as we go into Thursday. But notice all that heavy rain as this makes landfall right along and north of I-4. That is where the greatest impacts in terms of flooding is going to exist. And then further south of I-4, we're not really expecting a whole lot of rain down there. So there will be some rain and perhaps even a couple of tornadoes, but there won't be much else down that direction aside from the wind threat that we're going to see there. Once we go later into Thursday, this eventually moves offshore and then things will start to clear out as we go into Friday. In terms of total rainfall accumulation, this, in my opinion, is a very realistic forecast. I think that there is a very solid chance that there will be a narrow corridor near the I-4 corridor. Again, it's two corridors in one, but this area here in Central Florida is where we're going to have the potential for 10 to 15 inches of rain. And look at Daytona Beach, by the way, currently looking at the potential for up maybe to 15 to 20 inches of rain when this is all said and done. Now, again, a change to the, you know, the eye essentially where it makes landfall, if it's 5, 10 miles further south or 5 to 10 miles further north, could be the difference between you seeing 10 to 15 inches of rain instead of, you know, 2 to 4 inches of rain. So just keep that in mind. There is a massive, you know, difference between where you are in Florida uh, in correlation to where the eye will be. Uh, but nonetheless, you should be prepared for the flooding potential, even if you're outside of the highest highlighted area here in Central Florida. Now, in terms of wind gusts, we're going to show you a map that looks much clearer here in a second, but I do want to show you where the greatest wind speeds will be and when. So this is Wednesday night. Notice how the greatest wind speeds are eventually approaching the west coast of Florida near Sarasota and Tampa. Tropical storm force wind gusts for the rest of the state. Winds will be hurricane force as this moves inland into Florida overnight Wednesday into Thursday morning. What that means is that there could be falling trees. Power could be going out while you're sleeping. So make sure that you're staying very vigilant. Would recommend if you're in a two-story building to sleep in an interior room away from windows in case there are falling trees or flying debris. As we go later into the Thursday morning, this continues to move to the east. And again, notice how the winds are still very high, even on the east coast of Florida, into the late morning tomorrow, uh, Thursday, and eventually in, even into the early afternoon, those winds will still be staying high across eastern Florida. And then things will finally start to clear out as we go into Friday. You might be wondering, what can you expect in terms of the highest wind speed out of Milton, depending on where you are in Florida? And this map exactly tells you that. We are expecting Category 3 plus wind speeds right in the Tampa Bay area and surrounding locations like Sarasota, Bradenton, and even perhaps as far south as areas near Cape Coral. And then hurricane force winds are expected in the red, which goes anywhere from areas like Cape Canaveral back through Jacksonville near Daytona Beach, Orlando. So all those areas, you need to be prepared for hurricane force winds in anywhere in this area will likely end up having power outages and then tropical storm force winds will be possible outside of that. Now, in terms of power outages, well, we just kind of talked about it. We are expecting widespread power outages across central and western Florida throughout the overnight hours Wednesday and the Thursday morning. So make sure you have flashlights ready to go. If you have a generator, have that ready to go. If you have any friends or family that might need something that revolves power, make sure that you are you know in contact with them. Overall, though, widespread power outages expected in the pink and then a likelihood of having power outages does exist anywhere in the dark red. So make sure that you are ready to go in case there are power outages in your area, which again do appear likely. And storm surge is still expected to be one of the most life-threatening impacts out of Hurricane Milton. Right now, the greatest storm surge is expected in the Tampa Bay area, where 10 to 15 feet of storm surge will be possible. That is extremely dangerous. Again, you should be evacuating if you have not already, if you are under any ma mandatory evacuation orders. And then anywhere in Charlotte Harbor, near the Bonita Beach area, 6 to 10 feet of storm surge is expected. And also near Yankee Town and Anclo River, 5 to 10 feet of storm surge is likely. And then back over in the Florida Keys, a lot of people asking about that area. It'll be pretty similar to Helene, where there will be about 1 to 3 feet of storm surge. And then back over on the east coast of Florida, there is a large range for storm surge, but anywhere from 1 to 5 feet of storm surge is expected. We are going to be live at some point later today or tonight, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We'll be doing a full-blown Q&A. Make sure to click the bell icon down below as well so you're notified with the latest live update.